while we what a beautiful fucking morning to be alive you feel me <laughs> I was halfway through digging this hole when I realized that I was going to be talking about turning 30 and the lessons that I would be giving and the things that I would be doing differently in my 20s to change my trajectory to where I would want to be compared to where I am now. Now, first off, does that mean that I don't like where I am now? No, that doesn't mean that at all. As a matter of fact, I love where I am for where I was because when I was 22, I was still living with my mom in a flat in the projects like if, if you don't know what a flat is a flat is literally just a room and a bathroom there is no bedroom there is no kitchen it's just a flat room and a bathroom that's all you get okay when I was 22 I was still in a flat in the jets with my mom now I'm 29 I'm married I own my own home I have a beautiful wife with a beautiful son I'm very proud of where I came in just seven years. There are so many more places that I could be instead if I wasn't wasting so much of my damn time doing shit that didn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Things like playing too many video games. Playing, literally, I played RuneScape for 14, 16 hours out of the day just to play RuneScape because it was an escape from my situation. Now granted, I played enough to where I actually have a maxed combat account. And I had, let's see, I had a 99 in attack, strength, defense, prayer, magic, HP. I had a 99 in construction, crafting, smithing, mining. I can't remember any of the other 99s that I had, wood cutting, but the point is that I had invested a lot into that game. And I wish I never did because all those days, all those months, all those years of my teenage years, of my young adult years, like I spent a decade from 12 to 22 on that goddamn game, dude. And like, I'm not saying that you can't enjoy yourself every once in a while. As a matter of fact, to this day, I still spend maybe an hour playing Valheim with a couple of my friends. And that's fun but I don't let it consume me. It is genuinely at the very end of the day when I have done everything else that I need to, to do. Hold on now. I'm going to try and get that rock out. <laughs> okay. I love finding little shit like little things like this when I'm just out here. Could be something, but usually it's nothing. So lesson number one for things that I would do differently in my 20s. I would spend much more time actually being outside and out cheers. Now, you might be thinking, I just graduated high school. I really don't know what I want to do. All of my high school friends have either moved on or they we're all playing video games together and yada, yada, yada. And cool, I'm glad that you're enjoying your time with your high school friends. But let's face the reality here. I am now 30 years old. I had a pretty good circle of friends back when I was in high school. I could, I, I need, I, I could easily count 20 people that I was friends with. Guess how many people of those people that I'm still friends with to this day, bro? Two. That's a pretty good amount, if I'm gonna be honest with you. Because there's a lot of times that many of your high school friends will just never speak to you again Maybe because you were the outsider that they let in because they just needed another group member and you took all of the punishment that they brought onto you so you thought that their bullying of you was acceptance. It wasn't. Let's also get another thing out of the way. You saying that you don't know where to go to make more friends is genuine cope. There is absolutely no excuse that you can give me for why you can't just go outside go to an event center, go bowling, go shopping, go to the mall. You literally have an unlimited number of options that humans throughout history have always done to go out and find new friends. Go to the gym, go to the mall, go to the, go to the bowling alley. I don't fucking care, dude. And don't make it online friends either. Make it people that you actually meet in real life. Yo, check this out though. This is a really big like cinder block. <laughs> 
Rabbits will often come through my fence, so I'm probably gonna use it to block some of the holes in the fence where rabbits come in. And also, not only am I just gonna tell you you should go out and make more friends, I'm gonna tell you how you can make more friends. You make more friends by becoming more extroverted. I don't care if you say that you're introverted or not. People don't talk with introverted people. That's why you don't have any friends, because think about it this way. When was the last time that you talked to somebody else that didn't talk to you first? Now flip it. When was the last time that you talked to somebody that did talk to you, even if it was just, hi, how are you? Oh, I'm good. Good. You replied. You interacted. But you never engaged with the person who wasn't engaging with you, were you? So that is lesson number one. And actually, that's actionable step number one. The next time that you go out to the mall, to the gym, wherever it is that you're gonna go, it is your duty to talk to five people. Nah, that's too much. Talk to one person. Just cold approach somebody and look at what they're wearing. What are they doing? Are they doing bench presses pretty well? Are they doing squats pretty well? Do you wanna compliment them on their outfit? It could be a guy or a girl. Uh, preferably of the opposite sex, just because it makes you a little bit less awkward in the future. The more awkward interactions that you have now, the less awkward your interactions are going to be when you get older and you're actually trying to find someone to make a family with. So do it now. Do it now. So yes, that is your actionable step. Next time that you're out, be the initiator. Do not allow yourself to be the person that doesn't talk because if you're the person that doesn't talk, everyone else around you these days is the person that doesn't talk. So nobody is ever going to find a friend if nobody ever talks to each other because everybody is on their goddamn phones these days. I'm gonna link a couple of videos where you can watch where I tracked my screen time for two weeks. And in the first screen time video, I had, what was it, like nine hours of screen time or something? And I was like, okay, I'll just do this and this and this. And then guess what? Week two approached and I had 10 fucking hours of screen time. And I was like, what in the hell happened? And I realized it was because instead of spending time on Facebook and Instagram, I was spending more time on YouTube and um, the, the internet safari or whatever it's called. And I was just dicking around on those apps instead. So what I did is, what I did was I ended up just replacing the old time that I was spending on the old apps and substituting it for time spent on new apps. And it didn't make any fucking sense to me. I was like, how the hell did I fail my own challenge? Once again, I'll leave those li uh, videos linked down below in the description. But my point is, is that it's so hard to stay off your phone when you're not doing anything. So that's life lesson number two. Find a more interesting life. Now, again, I'm going to be having a lot of people go, oh, but Jeff, how do I do that? I don't know what's interesting about me. Find hobbies. When you were in high school, when I was in high school, actually, when I was in high school, I was varsity captain of the chess team, okay? When I was in high school, I was part of a Yu-Gi-Oh! duel club. When I was in high school, I was part of the track and field team. I involved myself a lot. Now that was back in high school, so I know you're gonna say, oh, but I can't do any of that now. Yes, you can. There are Facebook groups, there are Instagram groups, there are places that you can go online to find a local community of people that share your same interests and you could just go there as a complete stranger, try it out for one day. Maybe you'll have fun. And you wanna know what the craziest part is? If you take pictures of you at those events, you can use those for like your Tinder profiles or you can use those as like your profile pictures for any of the social media profiles that you have and everything. And you can show yourself having an interesting life, whether it's going out to the beach, whether it's going to um, certain events or clubs or something like that. You can find stuff to do. You're just bored and you're not willing to do anything to actually change it. And that's something, again, that I did throughout my 20s was I just kept being complacent with the fact that I was stuck in the jets. I was stuck in a flat in the jets. So I was just, 
well, this is what it is. I don't have any drive to improve it. So now you're asking, well, what did you do to improve it? Well, I'll tell you. I was in a long distance relationship for three years to a dead end relationship that just wasn't gonna work out. And then once that three year relationship ended, I was sitting on a bunch of money. Holy cow, oh yeah, that's gonna be good. <laughs> oh yeah, that'll be good. All right, let's start replacing this soil. So I was in a three year dead end relationship. And then when it did end, I was sitting on a pile of five digit money like 22 or $23,000. You wanna know why? Because between the ages of 19 to 22, when I was in those flats, that entire time I was saving up money to go see my long distance girlfriend. But she never wanted to see me and she kept making excuses on why I couldn't go to see her. So I was just saving, 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 saving because I really wanted to go meet this girl for three years, bro. For three entire freaking years, I was with this girl saving up money from a factory job that I didn't even like doing, but it paid me well. And then when I got home, I was just on fucking RuneScape for the rest of the fucking day. From 19 to 22, three fucking years, bro. That brings me to the next point is that, oh, well, then what did you do with all that money? I'll tell you what I fucking did with that money. I actually went and traveled to Vietnam just to fuck around because I was like, well, I've been with this Vietnamese girl for three fucking years now and I didn't get anything out of it. So you wanna know what? I'm gonna go to Vietnam and I'm just gonna go find a girl. Cause fuck it, you know? I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Quite frankly, I really didn't care what I was getting myself into. I was upset and I just wanted to go get some uh, actual fucking, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> So when I did travel to Vietnam, I was there for a total of 30 days, but things changed when on day like four, when I was at a local restaurant and I saw that there was a group of college age students right around my age studying English. And I was listening by for which one knew the best English because Google Maps is not fucking helpful in Vietnam whatsoever because their addresses are so fucking long, dude. They have like 10 lines of dialogue text for addresses. <laughs> it's so fucking dumb. And I came over to the one that was speaking the best English and I asked her, hey, can you help me out with this thing? And she said, yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. And then uh, the other college student, one of the guys, was like, hey, while you're here, can you help us practice English? And I was like, uh, I mean, the girl that I talked to was really, really cute. Don't get me wrong. So I, I obliged because I was like, well, I mean, at least I'm going to be able to actually probably hopefully get a phone number out of this, which I did. And then after I got that phone number, I continued texting that girl. And then on like day 27 out of 30, I asked her to be my girlfriend because I had taken her on a couple of dates and like I was totally meaning just to like meet a couple of women and just get, you know, spend my money and, you know, do that whole consumerism shit. But I ended up meeting my wife. <laughs> How crazy is that? Oh, bro, that wasn't even my fucking original point. <laughs> that was supposed to be point three. I mixed. I mixed not spending so much damn time on my phone into being in a long distance relationship, into being in a dead end relationship. Okay, so my point is, what the fuck was my point, dude? Bro, I had a point, I swear. <laughs> so my penultimate point, after everything is said and done, is spend less time on your phone. Don't settle for something that isn't going to last. Don't try and sleep around with the intentions of actually sleeping around because it's not going to go well for you. I don't care what all these red pill self-improvement YouTubers are telling you. What I'm telling you, that's dangerous. What I'm telling you is that it's so much more wholesome to just go out and meet people and enjoy your life. So point four, because I kind of mixed points two and point three together, point four, of what I would do differently in my 20s is that I would go out and exercise more. Exercise is so important for both your physical health as well as your mental health and it really does change your outlook on life. Now a lot of people are gonna be like oh yeah but I, 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 I already work out and everything 
But do you really work out? I'm talking about like you are sweaty, you are sore. You feel it for the next two days working out. I'm talking about like real workouts that actually build your body, build muscle, and make you really feel the effects of it afterwards if you don't actually <laughs> properly have a good diet. But that's point number five or whatever is that having a good diet is key. But like, no, nah, I'm going to finish this point. I'm going to keep myself on track. Just make sure that when you do physically work out, you really, really feel it. Otherwise, it's just not going to be worth it for you. There, there are a lot of people that go around working out, quote unquote, and all they do for real is they just go to the gym for like 20 minutes, get on the treadmill, hit one mile, call it good. And you don't want to be one of those people that I'm making fun of that get on the treadmill for 20 minutes for one mile and call it good. I mean, here's the thing. That's not bad if you're literally the first, first, first time ever in a gym, you're overweight, and all you can do is walk a mile in 20 minutes. If that is physically your limit, then no shame, no tea. You know I'm not going to shame people for trying to get into the shape that they want to. But when you've been plateauing, when you have been complacent about your progress, it really does show. It shows for me because, I mean, like, I'm going to be totally honest, bro. Skip to the timestamp in the video if you don't want to, like, see a dad bod or whatever. But I am actually very physically poor despite the fact that I've been in the gym for three years now. Like, you can even see it with, like, my biceps. My biceps really don't show anything. I don't really have anything to show for it. And I'm really disappointed with the progress that I've made. Bro, for three fucking years? That's fucking pathetic. And then also, like, this right here. Um, well, here's, here's the dad bod reveal. <laughs> here we go. Uh, yeah, this is your last warning to skip to the timestamp on screen if you don't want to see this. This is my fucking body. This. All exposed. It fucking jiggles. I don't have a six pack. There's just nothing there. This is three years. I am not in the shape that I want to be in. You might think that going to the gym, just go, to go to the gym is cool and all, but if you're not gonna actually put in the effort like I clearly haven't to actually get yourself in the shape that you want to be in, then what's the fucking point in you going to the gym? If you're gonna go to the gym, like, y yeah, you can be in average shape like I am. I would say I'm like, in terms of like physical fitness, I'm a five out of 10. Whereas everyone else, like, like a good 80% of people are four or below. Okay, so I'm above average. I'm in the middle of average. I'm not at the level that I wanna be at. So that's lesson number four is that if you are going to the gym and you are you know, into physical fitness, quote unquote, it really doesn't matter if you're not actually pushing yourself to your physical limits because pushing yourself to those limits, to the zero RIR, to the last pump, to the, you know, when you're not really physically pushing yourself to the point to where your body physically can't go anymore, and you'll feel it, by the way. Like, you know how when you're um, in a pump, and then you start to feel a little tired after the, the eighth or the ninth curl, and it really starts feeling tired, next time, instead of stopping right there when it starts to feel tired, push to the 10th, to the 11th. And then after the 11th, you're suddenly gonna feel like you can bust out like two more. So then you do 12 and then 13, and then you've done four more reps than you normally do because your mind is telling you that, you know, I don't want to continue anymore but your muscle physically can continue more. It isn't until you actually physically cannot lift the weight in proper rep range anymore that it becomes acceptable. So I think that's the main lesson that I would pass on is that I wish I took my physical fitness more seriously and I wish that I actually made sure that I kept myself in check. Now lesson number six of things that I would do different in my 20s is that I would absolutely be on a different diet. 
because when I was 22, I was on a diet of just fucking GNL chicken strips and maybe occasionally some fucking or 80% lean processed beef, ground beef and shit. And that's not a healthy diet to be on. On top of all the little snacks that I would have in between, it just was not a good place to be. And honestly, to be honest with you, this is a shout out to my wife. Because my wife taught me so much about not only just cooking good food, but about general nutrition and how to actually have a really good, healthy diet and everything. Like she taught me so much about how to cook well, how to have a good diet, how to make everything taste good. What, it doesn't matter, like even vegetables that I fucking hated before. Like I was vehemently against mushrooms. I hated mushrooms. But now I love mushrooms because they're dope. I also didn't like Brussels sprouts. Now I love Brussels sprouts. Um, I really didn't like asparagus before. Now I love asparagus. That woman knows how to cook. And she taught me how to cook. And if you guys want to learn how to cook, maybe I can... Uh, maybe you could throw in the comments, you know, Jeff, teach me how to cook. And I will happily teach you how to cook some very good authentic Asian cuisine using ingredients that you can just find in like Meyer. Not Walmart, because Walmart doesn't have any good foreign ingredients, but Meyer. When you have a poor diet, you get brain fog very, very easily. And it's very hard for you to focus because of that brain fog. Think about the last time that you were trying to like read an article or read patch notes or read a book or just read anything in general. When was the last time that you were able to read it from start to finish without having to retrace your steps because your brain wandered into an area that wasn't about reading the article. You just had a random fucking thought pop in. That's because of your diet. However, when you cook and you don't use any sugar and you just use naturally sweet ingredients, like, um, you know, you can boil apples and you can use apples in soups to kind of like have the apple melt into the soup and that's a natural sweetener. Um, bones. Any kind of meat that you have that has bones in it, those bones are going to provide the sweetest natural broth that you have ever tasted. Ooh, oh man. Natural bone broth that you boil yourself is, oh, man, it's good. But I'm getting ahead of myself. A good diet will make it so that way you don't have any brain fog. You can focus on the topic at hand. You can make sure that you're that your head is in the game and you can make sure that you're actually on topic with everything that you want to focus on. And even if you're just video gaming for 12 hours out of the day, if you have a clean diet, you will notice the difference in your reaction times, the communication with your teammates, whatever it is that you do. Now my next topic is going to be, I wish I took more pictures. I really, really, really wish that I took more pictures when I could with my friends, with my family and everything. Because here's the thing, I've been thinking about it. My son is four months old today at the time of this recording. When this video comes out, he'll be like four months and however many days. I really, really, really wish that I spent more time just taking pictures of him because I don't hardly have any pictures from when he was like less than a month old to a month old. Now, I take a ton of pictures now because I had this realization like, oh shit, my son is never going to be this young again. He is never going to look this way again. And that's just a few months. Sometimes when I'm on Facebook and those Facebook memories pop up and I see pictures of me and the two friends that I told you about and I see pictures of us just in random locations, we never look like that again. Those pictures are a literal snapshot of history. Those pictures are a snapshot of things that will never happen again. I would absolutely take more pictures, more videos, because I was looking at pictures of my wife while she was pregnant, and she took so many different pregnancy pictures. We took pictures next to all the vegetables, and we took pictures like at the beach and everything, and we took a lot of maternity photos. My wife is never going to look that good at that young while pregnant again it's a once in a lifetime moment we don't think about this kind of stuff when we are taking pictures but that picture is a snapshot of your life in that moment 
I would absolutely take more pictures because then when you're old and brittle and you're looking back on your family history, you can see all the pictures, all the good times, all the bad times, all the people you never want to see again, all the people you are thankful are still here. But I am so fucking passionate about going out of your way to try and take more pictures and buy a hard drive to make sure that you can actually save all those pictures because you might think, oh, I don't want 10,000, 20,000 fucking pictures clouding up my bullshit. I want 20,000 pictures of my family history, of my friends, of everything that I've experienced. Don't be shy about taking more pictures of the people around you because that is a snapshot of your life. And I am passionate about this one because it really is a snapshot in history of your history. Think about how cool it's going to be when my son grows up and I could show him all the pictures of my life that I could have had 10x more pictures of my life if I went out of my way to take more pictures. Take more pictures because that picture is never going to happen again in your life. Okay, so next lesson, I would have done more with my money because like honestly, like yeah, I have a house, I have my own car, my wife has her own car, I bought both of our cars and everything. We bought our house, you know, we're still paying on our mortgage, yada, yada, yada. But I would have done more with the money that I did have when I was working. I would have actually opened up a Roth IRA. I would have started contributing to retirement earlier. Like those three years that I don't have in my 401k are gone forever. Hey guys, I see a woodpecker. (laughs) I don't know if I can actually, yeah, I think it flew. Oh wait, no, there it is. Oh, it's actually building a hole up there. That's so cool. Wow, man, he is going. That's so cool. He actually has like a little home up there and everything. I like that. God, nature is so fucking beautiful. But yeah, I just would have been smarter with my money, with the money that I did have because I didn't contribute much of it to any of my retirement between those three years. And now that three years of lost retirement income that I could have had is now gone permanently, forever. Dunzo, Thanos snap, boom. So I just wish I would have managed my money better. You know what? Hey, see the stick? Oh yeah, you already know what's gonna happen. (laughs) Maybe. Who knows? (laughs) Ah, I couldn't do it. Yeah, there we go. (laughs) I, I Maybe I could have spent more, but honestly, when it comes to a vast majority of Americans, spending your money frivolously on things that generally don't matter to you is really a dumb concept. And then you try and justify it by like, oh, well, it looks cool, or well, it makes me feel good and everything. But think about it this way, okay? When was the last time you saw something that you wanted to buy and then you held off on buying it and then you waited about a week? And then after that week, you didn't want it anymore. I could think of one time that that didn't happen to me with the Tesla cars. When I first heard about Teslas, I was geeked up and hyped up and everything. And I really, really wanted one because, ooh, it's an electric car and it looks cool. And I wanted one for like the last four years. And like for the last four years, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for the opportunity that I can actually have enough spare income to actually afford one. But here's the thing. Even when the Model 3 refresh came out and I was like more hyped than ever to have a Tesla, I never got one because I was never in the position that it financially made sense for me to actually go and grab one. On top of that, I don't have a garage. I don't want my new fancy electric car to be sitting outside in the elements. I want it to be sitting in a garage. So like that was my first roadblock is that I first needed a garage and then I needed to actually buy the Tesla. And like after four years of really, really, really wanting it, like you don't have any idea how many times I visited that Tesla page and I was on the order confirmation page. I still don't have one because it doesn't fit in my budget or my mindset. And something that I would have done differently is I would have learned how to budget correctly more. I would have learned about credit scores earlier more. Now granted, I have an 813 credit score at this time, So I'm very happy with where I am and cool and everything, but I wish I would have learned about it all sooner. I wish I would have actually taken the time to understand how proper budgeting works. 
I wish I wouldn't have spent so much money to help my mom with like eating out and everything. There's just a lot of things that I really regret about learning about money in general and that I wish I could take back and, you know, do better with. I don't have enough soil. I mean, I'll buy, I'll buy some more later. It's fine for now. I'll buy some more soil when it comes time. So we're just going to kind of have like my, my workout birch tree kind of be my background. <laughs> Like normally, normally even I'll like use this birch tree. I don't know if y'all could see actually. Normally I would use this birch tree to actually do like pull-ups and everything. <laughs> oh, it's better than what it was. I was able to do four. Okay, but seriously, like lesson number, or whatever the fuck lesson number this is, I would go out more. Now this is entirely separate. This is a whole different point from I would go out with my friends more, or I would go out and meet people more. I would go out in nature more, out here, out, out here with, with these guys, you know? I would be out cheers more. Because when you get like an hour of sunlight, like this whole entire video is going to be like an hour and a half of me recording. There's going to be so much cut out of this video already, I can tell. But when I'm out here and I'm just enjoying myself and I'm having a good time and I'm getting some vitamin D from the sun and everything, it makes me feel so good. I'm sure you could like see the difference in how my mood is over the course of this video, like I started out kind of like all over the place and scatterbrained. But then after I started talking about my pictures, like every single picture that you take, what, I'm not gonna go on that rant again, but you see my mood shift. The sun is out. It's a beautiful day with no clouds out. I'm enjoying my life and I'm having fun telling you the things that I would have done differently to get in a better position now. Now, does that mean that I would have spent 12 hours of my day running through trails and everything? No, I wouldn't have done that. Just an hour a day. Um, an hour a day is a very large commitment when you're actually outside away from technology and everything. But it honestly does go by super quick. I don't even know what time it is. I don't have my watch on me or anything because I was just planting that tree. But yeah, I would have spent more time out in nature just appreciating it. Like with that woodpecker over there, with that woodpecker that was up there, I would have spent more time appreciating that. I would have spent more time appreciating all the birds around me, the squirrels running around me. I just would have spent more time appreciating everything that I have around me and the, you know, the place that I am. Now, when I was in the flats and the jets and everything, obviously I couldn't appreciate hardly anything over there because there's nothing out there that I wanted to experience. But I would have at least gone like other places and everything. Now here I can enjoy everything and appreciate everything that I have here. But if I was still in the flats, I would have at least gone out to like a hiking trail or gotten out of the house and just away from everything for like an hour out of the day. I don't know if you guys can like hear all the noises around me, so I do apologize about that. The birds are really starting to pick up now, but. All right, well, thanks for coming to my little 30 year old rant. I really, really do hope that you picked up something special or informative in this video because this really was a video that I wanted to do it's a lot different from how I wanted to do it, but I just hope it helps somebody out there, dude, because when you're in your 20s, your 20s are genuinely the time that you spend figuring out what it is that you want to do with life, how you wanna go about finding the people that you want to meet, the kind of people that you wanna be around, the kind of life that you style that you wanna have. When you're in your like late teens, 18, 19, and then you turn 20 to 24, 20 to 26, you really don't know what exactly it is that you want to do. Maybe you want to go to college and be, get your bachelor's degree in science engineering, or then halfway through you realize, oh, I actually want to be a lawyer, or oh, I actually want to be a social media influencer. It changes so much in your 20s that it's okay to have a different opinion and change and everything. No, that's a whole different topic. Yes, the next lesson, be okay with change. Do not be okay being stagnant and stuck in the same spot because change is something that we are all supposed to go through. We are supposed to always be evolving, always be learning. That's the next lesson then is that 
I would always be accepting of change. I wouldn't be scared of changing my environment, of changing how I look at things. Like I was always so scared to take out debts and everything, but as long as you budget properly, you can handle debts and manage debts just fine. This house is a debt, my wife's car is a debt, but that's all the debt I have. I don't have any freaking credit card debt or anything like that. So when I initially started learning things, I was hesitant on learning how to do things because, oh, I don't know how it works, therefore I don't wanna deal with it. I wish I didn't have this mindset because if I knew how things worked and I was more open to actually receiving new information that changed my outlook on things, I would be in a much better spot than I am now. And that's saying something because I'm already in a pretty decent spot. I'm in a five out of 10 spot, but it could have been in a six out of 10 spot or even a seven out of 10 spot if I really, really put in the work. But my point is, is that even though I have these regrets, I don't have any regrets about where I am now. I have regrets about where I could be, but for where I am now, I don't have any regrets. And all that could have changed if I just spent more time actually learning new things, being more accepting of change, being able to actually open myself up to other people's opinions and respect them as like, maybe their criticism is because, you know, I'm, I am doing something genuinely wrong and I just need to be able to actually be out here and I just need to actually look at myself and look inward and say, is this situation that I put myself in one that was because of what they did or is it because of what I did? That's something that you can always do with every single interaction. I still learn from interactions to this day. So it is a very important thing that you should do and consider if you are considering changing your life up and doing something different for your 20s is to open yourself up more. Oh, the woodpecker's back. Is to open yourself up more to change. All right, bros, my jaw is really starting to hurt now because I've been talking for like an hour and a half at this point. So if you really did enjoy this video, be sure to give me a like or a dislike, doesn't matter. Engagement helps. Comment below. What else do you think I missed on this little 30 year old update? What would I do differently in my 20s? Actually, that's another thing. Let's do a little Q&A. If you have any questions for me regarding like anything else that you could do differently in your 20s, I will do my best to respond to it probably with a short, if I'm gonna be honest, I'll probably like do short replies and everything. And if I get enough comments about like what I would do differently in my 20s on topics that I didn't cover today, then I'll probably just do another full blown Q and A video of like things that I would do differently. But again, subscribe to my channel, like, dislike, comment, engagement helps, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.